same doctor with the atomic microscope. Years ago, long before either of us had any awareness of chemtrail, his glasses, the frames of his glasses gave him cancer on his face. And he realized it was the nickel in the glass frame that was giving him, that gave him. So he went on a, 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 a mission, really, to find something, anything that he could take or anybody could take on a day-to-day basis that would attract and bind all toxic metal and take it out of the body. And he tried many, 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 many things. Ten years, you can imagine. The thing that he found that worked the best. Now, I don't know the availability outside of the United States, so you're going to have to be a little bit of a you know, resource person and a detective and find it in your own area, wherever you are, was food grade, and that's the key, food grade diatomaceous earth. Uh, in this country, in America, it's sold by a company called Permagard, P-E-R-M-A-G-U-A-R-D, dot com, as fossil shell flour, F-L-O-U-R. They sell it to the food industry as an anti-caking agent in cookies and cakes and whatever. But when he assayed it, it came back pretty pure. Many of the diatomaceous earth that he assayed were highly polluted. They had been doing their job. They were ground source or ocean source. This one comes from the bottom of a very deep lake in Utah, so it's been protected. With that said, who knows who's messing with what anymore, but uh, so far it seems to be holding up. But diatomaceous earth. And it's interesting because it's an old, old medicine. In eastern, in East India, uh, the pregnant women take it throughout their pregnancies. Uh, I've met with the head medicine man of Shoshone Indians here, and he said, oh, yes, we've been using it. We have our source. But you just have to be careful because if it's a, if it's a vein in the earth or in the ocean, it's been doing its job and it's starting to collect all these toxins, benzene as well, and other things. So you want a food-grade diatomaceous earth and what he told me you know as a naturopath in this country rose uh, i'm surrounded by very strict law i cannot diagnose or prescribe okay but i can educate (laughs) so that's what we're doing here we're educating Uh, so i asked him what would he doctor uh suggest and he suggested for the average adult approximately a tablespoon a day in distilled water, and he said it was very important to do it on an empty stomach because it doesn't recognize the, the good metal from the bad metals. Like, we need iron, we need trace copper and other things. So take it on an empty stomach is what he told me. For a child, the rule of thumb in natural medicine when we're doing children is half, half, but depending on the height and weight. Right. I was on the Permagard yeah. website today that sells what they call fossil flower diatomaceous earth, and the two things he mentioned specifically is that it came from a freshwater source, not a saltwater source, and that right. it's almost white in appearance. Mm-hmm. So those two markers could possibly be used for other other countries like New Zealand. Yes. If you could find a diatomaceous earth and then your daughter's a teenager so she could probably do a, an almost an adult at least dose. two teas yeah or two and I, I will thank say you. Thank it has you. many other very I'm sorry I'm sorry I think I stepped no, go away. ahead I, I just said thank you thanks very much go yeah. ahead Duncan. you're very welcome and it has some other wonderful properties um, it's it's 70 to 80 percent silica so it's very good bone builder and hair and skin. It, uh, if you have any kind of, um, uh, oh, I guess I just ran out of steam for a second here. I'm sorry. I've been pushing so hard. I want to get the word out. I'm, I'm sorry. If you have any kind of parasite in your colon, it will kind of knock those guys back or out. Um, I've had many clients tell me. Can you do this daily? like for the rest of your life? I Well, I, I, I personally am and have for the last uh, 15, I don't know how many years since Dr. Knight brought it to me. Um, he felt that you could. 
There is no downside. The only downside he felt, only contraindication, was if you took it anywhere near your food, it could uptake, like if you ate, it, let's say, a really iron-rich spinach salad, you know, you could uptake the, the iron out of that. But if you do it on an empty stomach by at least an hour in either direction uh, away from your food, not only do I think you could, I think you should. That's my opinion. Because of you its ability. You mentioned once before kind of a sci-fi sort of comment that these pseudo-life forms use heavy metals almost like weapons inside our bodies. No, that's Do the they... fungus. No, no, let's get clear. That's the fungus that picks up the metal. These little tiny pieces of submicroscopic pieces of, men, of the aluminum, barium, and all, they're shaped like swords, so to better pierce our lungs, so that you know. But it's the so... fungal aspect, which we haven't gotten to yet, that use these metals, not the pseudo-life forms. Ah, and can the funguses tell the difference between a metal we need and a metal we don't want, like the difference between iron and barium, for instance? That's a really good question I cannot answer. Okay, okay. Can, I don't know. Can, can I, just, can I just, um, just clarify this then for our listeners? So you're saying uh, that the diatomaceous earth, which, um, and, and try and get in its purest form, folks, it's food grade that we're talking about here, and there are places that you can get this. Uh, we will put links out uh, under the YouTube video when this comes out. Um, we we want to just clarify that, that the DE is to remove the metals from your, your system first of all. There, are, there is a three-part process here that you have to go through for this detox that, that Dr. G uh, Gwen Scott is talking about, I believe. Is that correct, Doctor? I'm sorry, I didn't completely understand that. Uh, the the I diatomaceous a, uh, earth. Is, uh, I I got an echo through that. I'm sorry. The diatomaceous Those. earth uh, is to remove the is to remove the metal. And uh, is that correct? Yes, that's yeah. correct. And and uh, as many other wonderful things, but that's the most important thing it does. And I will say, I've gotten confirmation. Well, Doctor Knight, who brought this to me. Uh, did a lot of blood, skin, you know, hair sampling to verify his findings. But I, on, a, on an empirical or an observational level, have had many clients tell me that, and this is back to the quote-unquote Morgellon syndrome, the, the brain fog started to lift and they began to be able to think with some clarity again. Now, with that said, many of these people tell me when they first start taking it, sometimes, this is not a rule of thumb, but uh, their, their, their hip might hurt or be tender for a week or so, and then it goes away. Well, the body is very intelligent, and it knows these metals are deadly uh, to the system, and it will store them many times in joint. So if you have a little bit of that, stick with it, uh, is my opinion, because it's drawing it out and taking it out of the system. Right, And I wanted to ask okay. you also about the use of cilantro that Dr. Osuma pioneered. Wonderful. Um, cilantro is another wonderful toxic metal detoxifier. I it's just that most people can't eat enough in a day to do the job they need to do with all of the, you know, with every breath you take, you're bringing this stuff in. I, I read that one of the advantages of using cilantro, why we should include it, is that it has the capacity to go through the blood-brain barrier, whatever the chemical is, and actually extract right. metal from the brain. Yes, and I'm I not believe sure that. that. that and I believe that. Okay. Coriander is the purest form of cilantro you can find, too. Coriander is, is what we call... I'm sorry. Go ahead, Rose. Coriander is what we call cilantro down under, guys, so um, same thing. Carry on. Okay. I was just wondering how much, since you said it's really difficult to get enough in your diet, um, how much would it take daily of eating cilantro? It's all over the you, Internet. You've been doing the protocol. Pardon me? Are you I'm there, sorry. I'm here. Are you there? 
Okay, yes, explain yes. what you've been doing. Sorry? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> you've been doing it very success. You feel like you've been very successful with it. If you can share with people what it is, where the source of your cilantro and how you've been doing it. Yes, I purchase the cilantro at the organic food market, and if I can't, I go ahead and I buy grocery store cilantro, and I wash it with the Miracle Soap, which we'll be talking about shortly. And then I generally put it in a, the blender. Uh, I just cut some of it off with scissors and throw it in the blender. They also have a recipe for a pesto that you can make. It stores very well, and it is... Um, it's quite good, and you need two teaspoons a day of that. They also recommend taking chlorella, the seaweed, with it, 1,000 milligrams, 20 minutes ahead, because cilantro or coriander will mobilize more metal in your blood than it can clear. So it's important to get that um, into your system 20 minutes ahead of time so it's in the exact right space to catch those heavy metals as they're dumped into the top of the digestive tract. And that being said, okay. we've dealt with heavy metals. Um, how do we crash the fungal network? That seems to be a oh. huge issue and for so many people I see have it's fungus huge. out of control and they don't, it's many people huge. don't even right, know please. they do. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. That's why we're losing all of our frogs, uh, Tasmanian devils, uh, bats in this country. Uh, this fungus uh, uh, got on the skin of the frogs. They couldn't breathe. The Tasmanian devils, I'm told, it gets it's around their mouths and they can't eat. Same thing with the bats in this country. That's why we're losing so many. It's this fungus. It's very tenacious. Uh, again, I think laboratory created, no doubt in my mind. Um, well, with that said, first line of defense always is diet, uh, is the first line of defense. And with that said, it's not going to be the whole answer, but it's very important. Uh, fungus does not do well, and no, no fungus does well, even a jerry rigged, you know, I give a dog a bone from the varmint's fungus, um, <laughs> does well with a lot, which, you know, in a sugarless environment. So we're really going to have to look at our, uh, consumption of all sugars and try to keep that at a minimum or not at all. And it's a hard thing for people, uh, but that's the fact. And then we in incorporate antifungals into our diet, garlic being very profound, very profound. Uh, there's an herb from South America called Paul Diarco, P-A-U, capital D hyphen, Arco, A-R-C-O, very powerful antifungal.